website. And so we're just going to, let's just stand and pray together as we join them in worship. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence that resides in this place, Lord God. And tonight we just ask, Lord, that you would take us deeper, Father God, that you would open the floodgates of heaven, Lord, and that you would take us, Lord, and minister, minister, to, us, minister to us as we minister to you, God. With our eyes fixed on you, we worship you tonight, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your breakthroughs, Lord, in this season, Lord. God, we ask that you would finish what you started, Lord. In your mighty name.
word of um, see the burning bush. And Moses has a chance, an opportunity to go over. And then when he gets there, uh, the Lord says, take off your shoes. And what would have been understood at that point was shoes are a symbol of your right. If you had no shoes, you had no rights. If the Lord took your shoes, you lost your rights. And so in that moment, God is saying, Moses, will you come to me?
The Hebrides had revivals before that. And so the parents had known about it and were desperately seeking it. They had had it before and they knew they could have it again. And he calls, he calls his parents singing a part of a hymn. That's almost long forgotten now.
I love that churches all around London are pushing for revival. Are seeking God and declaring revival over the city, over the change over the city.
stir up desperation around me. There's nothing else will do. Nothing else will do. Let's just press it for some more time. So to Lord, if it's sick, you're even in it. Shake your even in it. So good. So good. I'm going to stay in it. Shake your even in it. So to Lord, if you're a stone, I'm going to. Shake it and shake it even in the rain. So tell me a stone, I'm gonna. Don't you get it? Shake it even in the rain. Shake it all the stone, I'm gonna. But I'm gonna. Don't you get it? Shake it even in the rain. 
Well, Father, even tonight, we thank you that you're here, Lord. We cry out to you today, Lord. That you will come and you will come and touch the city, Lord. You will come and touch Ilford, Lord. Let your glory break out, Lord. Let your fire break out, Lord. Let it touch every every house and every street and every school and every business and every church be set on fire.
of these 60 days we've been entering into, you're worthy of every moment, of every song, of every verse, of every message preached, of every prayer proclaimed. You're worthy of it all. It's all, it's all right to do it for you. It's all right to do it for you. It's all right to do it for you. Here we are. Abba, here we are, Jesus. Here we are, Spirit, looking very, very intently at you. We want eyes locked on you, locked on you, locked in, locked on you. Oh, Lord, like missiles sent to hit their target. We want, we want eyes locked on you, locked on you. Father, even tonight, we want to thank you that you gave us this grace, Lord, to come for this last 57 days, Lord, to seek you, Lord, to pour your affection on you. We thank you for that grace, Lord. We thank you what you've done, Lord, even in our midst these days. We want to honor you. That you come and ravish our hearts, Lord, afresh. Lord, we pray for each and every prayer request, Lord, which has been made in this house. Lord, we thank you for every answered prayer. But we also thank you for every prayer, Lord, which you're going to answer even in the last three days, Lord, these three days. We thank you that 
it's sealed right now in the name of Jesus because you promised us that when two or three are gathered, Lord, in our midst, Lord, in your midst, Lord, that what we ask in earth will be done, Lord, in heaven, Father. And we declare it right now, Lord, that even every prayer request, Lord, made, even by, even, even by, by a live stream and media and, and whether it's in paper or however they've given it, Lord, we pray, even in the next three days, Father, let it be done, Lord. Thank you for the answer prayers, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, John T. Jack. Thank you, Sarah. Let's give it up to them. Uh, they're from Christchurch Film. Isn't that right? Yeah. Christchurch Film. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. I want to welcome all of you, 57th night, and we just, 58th? We just got three more days. Isn't that amazing? I want to quickly give some, I think everybody seems to be so quiet today. <laughs> Come on. Wow. <laughs> just want to quickly make some announcements. Uh, so we have... Uh, Yes, Thursday. We just have Friday and Saturday and then the Sunday. So we are ending the season with it. So even if people watching, if you have testimonies, we want to hear your testimonies. And, and on Saturday night, we are trying to be looking at taking testimonies also during the time of our service. For me personally, it's been one of my best seasons with the Lord. I know many people can say different things. You have, but for me, it's been one of my favorites. And you know, everyone has favorites, so um, so uh, it's really made me fall in love with Jesus like never before, and that's the best thing. So uh, I, I I mean, so I know many of you would have had different experiences and different, but more than anything, I just feel that let it not be about the season when people are watching. You know, let it be something which stirs up, so that uh, you know, even this year, twenty twenty. We grow in our walk with the Lord. Amen. And uh, so I'm excited about 2020. I'm excited about just winning souls. I'm about excited about taking the fire of God. I'm excited about, you know, what the Lord's going to do. I'm expecting. I just feel so expectant. You know, it's like sometimes you feel expecting the Lord's going to do something. I'm in that place. You know? And uh, I remember in the last 10 days I've been just feeling it in my spirit. It's like, you know, just getting pregnant with things. And so I'm excited about what the Lord's going to do. But I'm also excited that that uh, we got to do this 57 days. Yeah, come on. It's not been, sometimes people say it's not been easy. It's been challenging coming night up tonight, you know. And uh, But, uh, you know, I just want to honor everyone who's been able to come and support and serve and, you know. So... And God is going to honor, and even people watching from across the world, we have so many people watching from across the world, mm. and who've uh, joined us, you know, not just at this time, but even on life, even later on, catching back, and just plugging into what the Lord's been doing, amen? Yeah. Uh, so quickly, uh, we have uh, next week, uh, it's just amazing that next week we get to go, we get to go to Scotland, we have, uh, uh, you know, that's the 6 to 8th, uh, we're just expecting some great things. So we have, we're there on the Friday night, Saturday morning conference, and Saturday night, and then Sunday. So different, different conferences, actually different meetings and conferences and and churches. And so we just get to be there as a team, and and we're expecting. This is the first time we are in Glasgow, and we get to be with different in churches. And so we're expecting some great things, man. Come on. Isn't that amazing yeah. that we get a go soon after this pursuit? Right. <laughs> Sometimes it's really good. <laughs> really good. All of that. Uh, some other things which are happening in the life of the church. Uh, we have uh, uh, Papa Che Che on with us March 20, 20th, 21st, 22nd. So, nights of revival. Apparently, God's breaking out powerfully now in Harvest Rock Church in Pasadena. They've been having meetings and so. He told me, he just texted me, he says, you know, I'm coming to serve the church. I'm also coming to impart something which I feel is a very special season in Pasadena. Wow. 
which they're experiencing. Yeah. So we're excited about that and also for what's going to happen. And then uh, April 4th, those of you know, we have Rick Pino with the School of Worship here. We're going to register directly on its site. I believe the school is amazing. Don't miss out on it. And uh, so that's April 4th, the Saturday evening, I think it is. So, wow. So I'm going to share for some time. I'm going to have Daniel uh, come up here and lead us in a couple of songs. Daniel is a worship pastor of Happy News Hong Kong. Let's get up to him. He just come up for me. I'll call you just five minutes, yeah, 10 minutes. Or maybe 15 minutes. <laughs> so uh, I, I've got to be in that church. Uh, I've got to, had the privilege of preaching in the church. Uh, it's an amazing church, and God's just doing something uh, there. And so excited uh, to have him tonight also over here with us and just leading a couple of songs. So at uh, Psalms 26, I just felt the Lord saying something. So it's a special in my heart today, and I just want to share that with you guys and before. Just having a couple of more songs of worship. It says, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Just what the Lord is saying. You know, when the Lord brings us back at any time, there will always be a dream he's going to put in our hearts. <laughs> It can be individually, it can be corporately. And it's so beautiful that, you know, when we seek the Lord, and I don't know what's a captivity, it can be areas of a life which have been captive. It can be, you know, it can be some of the, it can be spirit, soul, and body. It can be any area. There's always, the devil doesn't like us. Come on. You know, a lot of times I've seen people term different things, but it's so easy lose areas of our life and let it go into captivity. So, there's always, always, when the Lord brings us back, there's always going to be a fresh dream. Come on. I don't know about you, I'm having some fresh dreams in the season. When He brings you back, He will put a dream in you. You know, He will put a fresh passion in you. He will put a hope in you. He, 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 you know, you, know you, you get a dream for God. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's another chapter by itself and it's another book by itself. But I'll tell you something. When he gives you the dream, always a dream will be for God and it will be from God. I'm not talking about a natural dream. I'm not talking about some strategy or something which we want to do naturally. I'm talking about godly dreams. What are areas in our life? And I believe even in this season, he's bringing people out of captivity. It can be bondages, it can be sins, it can be curses which have been broken. It can be strongholds, it can be spirit, soul and dark body. There's been, there's been something he's brought back in this season. Hallelujah. I love this. When the Lord bought back. You know, listen, Jesus shed his blood so that he can buy back. Everything which is from the devil. Amen. Amen. So if there are areas where we have not seen fruit, we don't need to agree with it. You know what, what, what happens a lot of times, you know, you, know, you know our problems? When we agree that this is fine with the devil. We don't want to agree with it. We don't want to agree like it's fine to be in bondage. It's fine to be in sin. It's fine to be complacent. It's fine... You know, just to do normal life. It's fine to be in debt. You know, we just agree with them. Oh, it's fine. Everybody all of that. So we're going to be all of that. It's fine. Like, I mean, we just say, oh, it's fine. That church is like that. Or this ministry is like that. Or this business is like that. We, we just agree with it. But that's not what Jesus said. We want to agree what, with what Jesus said. When he brings back, when he redeemed us with his precious blood. That's a buyback. Amen. Amen. I believe this is a buyback season. Hallelujah. I saw it with James, James Golford. He said, you know what? This is a buyback season. This is, this is, he's bringing us back. You know, I do believe that he's bringing the church back. He's bringing, you know, you see prophetic words all across UK. You know, there is something fresh happening. Yes. Amen. There's a fresh dream. And we don't want it to end in Jan and Feb. That's one of the dangers I've seen, you know. 
People are on fire in Jan and Feb and they fasted and prayed and sought the Lord and by the time March comes and April comes and slowly it all drifts away and then you get back into normal business. There's no more prayer. Prayer becomes from daily to weekly to then it becomes monthly and then slowly just drifts away. By the time Christmas comes, it's just, I mean, what I'm trying to say is just going back to what normal happens. See, that's not what, listen, because a lifestyle of where we know that Jesus has brought us back and that we are a new creation, you know, will allow us to dream. I do believe that in this year, even people are watching for us as Capstone, for us as a family, this is a season we're going to be dreaming. We're going to be dreaming big. We're going to be dreaming. I'm not, I'm not talking about like, you know, with worldly ambition, but I'm talking about we want to really see impact for what we've sown for years. We've sown a lot of things. And I believe prophetically that this season is a season where we are going to see fresh dreams come forth. Amen. You know, I love that. There's been dreams. Uh, I, I love the blackboard. I go there and I just see, it's amazing what's written there. I, like, I just prophetic every, every, every dream which has been written over there, that we will be deaf free. It'll be, this will be a depression free zone. There will be lenders to nations. Listen, all, a lot of these are prophetic words, but we need to agree with that and we start yeah. dreaming for that. Like, unless we start dreaming, you know, we, we, I mean, listen, because, because I just love it. I mean, when, I, when we look back, I remember, like, I'm just thinking today, it's 24 years back that Jesus saved us. We were in a small town in India. Now, couldn't afford even $100. And so, you know, I couldn't even go to the biggest, the next city. And in last 23 years he's taken us to over 50 nations brought us to london you know what has taken us right from you know new zealand right into africa to to america to i mean what i'm trying to say is if he could do that with with nobodies in those last 23 years you know with nothing no money no no contacts uh, you know <laughs> i mean when i mean what i'm trying to say is it's only because of jesus Nothing else. You know, if he can do that, and even when he brought us over here, and even when we started the church, and we started the business, and everything, we started with nothing. You know, didn't know anybody. And so I, I just feel, feel, but it's always important to acknowledge that and go back to things how we started. I remember the last three, three, three years, and I mean, the thing, you know, sometimes as time goes by, you can get... Uh, Especially during the awakening, the seven months, we had so many people come and I think over 1,500 new people came to our church and we got out and over 10,000 people were watching us over there. Sometimes we can get caught up in all that. And we lose the purity, lose the, lose the focus of how we started, simplicity of prayer. You know, and the Lord is reminding me, you need to go back to your first love. You need to go back to simplicity of purity of of, uh, of seeking God in prayer and fasting. Let, that's the lifestyle. Amen. You know, we can't get away from that. We, we have to, that's what, you know, that's what started and got us here. Amen. Yeah. You know, so I mean, so this year, I know there are so many open doors which are just opening for us. You know, we are in uh, Los Angeles, we are in Pasadena, we are in San Diego for Revival Alliance Conference. I mean, our team, it's all a privilege, but it's not about all that. You know, it's not about we get to speak in all these big conferences and lead worship in big conferences. We, all that is because of our own room, of, 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 of our simplicity, of seeking God, of getting back and, and coming down. And, and, and I, I do believe sincerely, that's what pleases God. That's what is allowing us to dream. And it says that our mouths filled with laughter. And I just think, I said, Lord, that's amazing, isn't it? You know, see, when we start dreaming, there will be always be the laughter. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and a tongue with singing. And then they said among the nations, Lord has done great things for them. I do believe that that's what's going to happen. The Lord has done great things. I mean, I'm really excited. I remember years back saying when we were in Manapak and other building, just saying, listen, I want, I want to see the streets transform because, you know, we, we get to be in all these areas where everything is like 
uh, you know, really uh, downtrodden and broken and in bondage and all that. And, 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 and the beauty is just start dreaming and saying, you know what, these buildings and these shops and this area is not going to be that, it's going to be transformed. Even when I walk up, you know, uh, like, you know, there's this nightclubs, no disco, discotheque, no problem, and, you know, all these, all these nightclubs, and just think about dreaming about all these nightclubs closing, and, and, and that there's been light over there, and, and, you know, and, I mean, listen, what I'm trying to say, sometimes being in a dark area, you know, you can just say, it's only God who can do that. Come on, man. But we have to start dreaming for that. That's right. We have to start believing for that. I mean, I, I, I mean, I just believe that these streets are not going to be the same, you know, this side of... Ilford is not going to be the same, you know, and, and, and sometimes being in a place like that, that it's only Jesus that can do it, and we dream for that. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then you can say, Lord has done great things. Amen. Every, every time, listen, I do believe, you know, the problem is sometimes we just stop dreaming. We stop believing. We just agree at what, you know, what's normal. You just say, you know, that's like that, that's, this church is like that, or that ministry is that way better than them. Listen, that's the worst place to be in. You know, what is the most important thing is, are we pleasing God or not? Yeah. It's not about big, small, you know, and we don't even, I mean, the danger is that, you know, like they just went comparing ourselves with somebody, you know, whether we are big or small. I, I was thinking, the other day, Lord spoke to me, you're neither big nor you're small. You know, I mean, listen, that's a good thing. You know, neither are you too big nor are you too small. Because, you know, you, you ask the big people, they say, oh, you guys are too small. You're small just you, have, you know we are really big I've had both yeah. and both are dangerous because it's not about that yeah. because yeah. we get to be who we are to, who we are yeah. Yeah. you know and and everybody are comparing them, uh, themselves with somebody else and you're you're forgetting and you're you're we are I mean we're getting it's we need to enjoy the work Come on. Mm -hmm. we need to enjoy like just being over here in the presence of the Lord and worshiping whether it's 10 people, or whether it's 50 people, or whether 100 people, the most important thing is whether the Jesus is there. Yeah. We get to be with him. You know, where we start enjoying. The moment we stop all that, then it's a dangerous place to be in. Listen, I'm not against big meetings or neither am I against small meetings. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, I think, I think both, you know, God can me everywhere. You know, sometimes you know, people get off and oh, you know what? This, this is big and that's not from God. I'm, I, that's not true, you know? Because end of the day, it's all about numbers. Because I, I mean, I've been more, I've been reading the word. You know, Bible is very clear that God added to the church daily. They met daily. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, so that is a multiplication. That should be because we want souls saved. Yeah. It's not just about people coming, but so that is important. Amen. I mean, because that's the word. Acts 2 is a word. We want Acts 2. But, you know, we want multiplication. We, it, we want it with the power of the Holy Spirit. Not with our ability. Not with our effort. Not with some great strategies. Today, you can do different things and you can have a church. But that's not what I'm trying to say. But in Acts 2, it was the Holy Spirit. You know, and, and we are in the season where we are going back to this place where the Spirit of the Lord is going to come in, in a way, in a special way. And we are going to see multiplication. Amen. Yeah, we are really going to see multiplication. I'm believing God for that. Yeah. I'm going, believing God for souls to be saved. Yeah. We're believing yeah. God for signs and wonders and miracles. Yeah. Because that's, a, that's the Bible. If that's not happening, then there's a problem. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's why we are seeking God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then it says, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. I've never cried more than I've cried in this season. And I do believe the most beautiful thing about a Christian life is to cry sometimes. I'm not talking about a worldly sorrow. That's different. The Bible clearly says, and I think it's 2 Corinthians 7, 7 says, Godly sorrow leads to repentance, but worldly sorrow leads to death. So there's a difference between a godly sorrow and a worldly sorrow. And this is those who sow in tears is crying out before the Lord. Yeah. Weeping before the Lord. You know, that's a beauty. You know, because you go down. You, you get to bow down. You get to kneel. You get to you know, lie down and just soak and cry. And, and when you read the word, you know that Jesus is real. You know, you get to... And 
That's the sowing in tears we're talking about. Listen, that's a seed you sow in tears. You know, I think it's a Spurgeon who called us the liquid prayer. But I do believe, I do believe, you know, when we pray and when we cry and when we shed tears and there's something which is beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. And in this season, you know, it's been beautiful doing that. How many of you have experienced that? Come on. I won't lift up your hands. I mean, I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about even in your personal life, you know. You know when you get out of that, it's not a good place to be in. You know when, when you're able to, you know, sow in tears, when you're able to cry before the Lord, when you're, you know, I think I told somebody who told me this before. If you don't cry before the Lord, sometimes you need to cry before man. And you don't want to cry before man. You want to cry before the Lord. Yeah. You want to get broken before the Lord. You know, you want to, uh, you want to come to this place. That's what is softness. That's the brokenness. You know? And that breaks pride. You know, sometimes pride is a problem. And then it comes beautiful. It says, shall reap in joy. And I do believe joy is very important. Yeah. When, you, when there's a weeping, there's always going to be joy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then it says, He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing. Continually go forth weeping. Continually. I do believe as a church, we want to make this a lifestyle even in this year. I'm just... I'm just Desperate to see that. This continual sowing tears, continual weeping as a ministry. You know, people say different things. Oh, you know what? Once a week meeting is fine. Four hours meeting is okay. But what I'm trying to say is not that. I'm talking about a lifestyle of weeping. A lifestyle of being, sowing seeds. You can see that. You know, there's a seed. You know, you know, we, you know I, I mean, that's what really we want to see. Because when that happens... You can really see the habitation of his presence. You can see a softness. You know, wherever I've gone to places where there's been, where there's been a lot of crying out and prayer and, you know, and worship. And you go in there, you immediately know this place is special. I'm not talking about a meeting. I'm not talking about an individual anointing. But I'm talking about a, a place. Those of you who've been to IHOP will know that. You enter that. There's something special there because of... Uh, years of prayer and worship which has gone on there. That's it. You know, I, I, I see any place like that. And I believe this continual weeping. We want to create a, a place where God's habitation, God's glory is real. And you know when you come in, we just can pray. We can read the word. The Lord will speak to you. And I love this. I think this is a good place for that. And this is a prophetic word we had. That this has become a house of prayer. Man. A continual weeping. I don't know how we're going to do that, but you know, God has to work it out supernaturally because you know we don't want to tire the team out and all that. I don't know, but I believe God's going to work out. Maybe it's just going to be a playing of a worship music. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know I believe that it's important because you know there has to be a continual place of weeping before the Lord. There's been a continual place of prayer because you know that's something which happens—a softness of heart. You you, you can see that people of prayer and worship and, and, and crying out. There's, there's, there's a seed. Amen. And then bearing seed for sowing shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Doubtless. Come on. I mean, for me, I've seen you know, you, you know, sometimes when we don't see that, it's a danger. You know, there'll be seasons of sowing and even, even in meetings, suddenly you'll be crying for some time and then you'll be laughing and joy for the next half an hour. Hallelujah. And people get offended of that. Why people are crying? Why people are laughing? People, I mean, people have different problems. I have problems with both. I, I mean, I mean you, know, you know, there are problems when people try to do only one thing and then they get, it's about the manifestation. It's not about the manifestation. It's not about that. Because we've had, I mean, listen, I'm, because, you know, sometimes people can say revival and manifestation can just be, it just, it can just be, and because everybody are laughing, some, some people are laughing. That's not what I'm talking about. 
You know, I mean, I'm not talking about even trying to make up things. But what I'm trying to say is, in our hearts, there will be a bubbling up which will come right out of our bellies. You know, there's sometimes when the word you just start weeping and then you start seeing the joy bubbling out and, you know, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's amazing. That's why there is a rejoicing. And this is, you know, this is, this is not depending on any circumstances. I mean, I do believe we're getting back into the season where we're going to continually see that. We've had seasons like that, but I do believe that's a lifestyle which God's expecting from us. Where seeds, where we keep sowing seeds, we weep and we cry out and then we are bubbling with joy. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, you know what it does? It breaks depression. Yeah, yeah. It breaks strongholds. You know, joy breaks it. You know? I mean, I, I'm serious about it because the devil doesn't like joy. The devil hates it. <laughs> you know, you start sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just even good to laugh at the devil, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I'm serious about it. I do that because, you know what, and, but I'm talking about in the spirit realm. Don't do it in the natural realm because, you know, then you'll be a problem. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you have people, you know, you know, you, you see, I'm talking about really faking it out and I'm really, really, really concerned about that. That's why I'm concerned about what, what people call revival. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it all because we, we, we've seen this like, you know, sometimes you get over it and over like for eight years. And that's why I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sometimes scared to call something revival because, you know, you start seeing so many things in the flesh and, you know, and, uh, I know, and, and the problem is, problem is, you know, so then people shout out the original or the real thing because there's so much things in the flesh. And, but you know what, like, and, and devil takes advantage of that because devil doesn't like joy. Come on. You know, and, and, and the beauty with the joy, the real joy, when it really bubbles up from our, from our bellies is that, you know, it breaks depression. It breaks oppression. It immediately, you know, it breaks addictions. I've seen that. I remember, you know, this is amazing. I remember we, we were doing street evangelism. I think it was East Ham at that time. This is like, you know, I mean, we were in the old building this four or five years back. And I remember this one night and, you know, we were there. Suddenly, uh, we were, the team, worship team was there. We were doing, we had different things. We said we will buy chicken and chips and we'd give it to people. And then, you know, we will, <laughs> we will, we will worship and, and, uh, and all that. So because we were giving chicken and chips, we had a lot of drunken people who came. And, and, and they were Eastern Europeans. And, and, and as they came and we started hitting, uh, giving them, they got hit with joy and they started, you know, I mean, they were not believers. They like, and they didn't even know English. We were speaking English. They were, they only knew Romanian. They were Romanians. And they got hit with joy. And they start, got filled with the Holy Spirit right on the streets. You know, I mean, what I'm trying to say is God baptized the Holy Spirit. Power of God hit them on the street. And listen, what I'm trying to say is God can do anything when he moves. Yes. Come on, because he just loves it. He loves the fire of God. He, I mean, I mean, I tell you, this worship, power of worship on the street, I thought it was amazing at that time. Because it breaks the, the darkness. It breaks that area. And, and added to that, generosity is amazing. Because you know what? You call people, why are you buying us chicken and chips, you know? And we were like, we had one cashier there, and, and George and Matthew and all of that. Like, we are buying, you know, you get people, hey, we want to buy you chicken and chips. They all, they, they all are coming. They're lining up queue of people lining up. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have worship, we have witness, we have joy, you can have, we have healings along with that, you know. So, I, I mean, I think that is an amazing way of street evangelism. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think, I, I think, I think, I, I do think that, you know, that's an important part of street evangelism to release joy. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. But, we are able to do that because, I mean, I remember the seasons, whenever we've been pressing in, in prayer, when we've been crying out, when we've had that, had that overflow of, of Jesus in us, everything is so easy. The joy of the Lord is easy, generosity is easy, you know, uh, breaking miracles are easy, depression is easy, but... And I remember Michael saying, even in the seven months of awakening, somewhere, somewhere along the time, it can just become sometimes, it can be an overflow of something which has happened in the past. And you can get to meetings and you can see that things are happening, but you really are not in this place 
where uh, where you where there's breakthroughs. You know that. You know that. You're you're living on old wine. You're living on yesterday's anointing. You know, and that's a dangerous place to be in. You know, I'm I'm, I'm talking to myself as well as I'm talking to people. You know, right? You want always the new wine. You want the freshness. You want you want the you want, you want the new things happening. You know, and I'll tell you something. You know, this is. We, we, we've been in this for some time now. I'm not saying we know everything, but you know, little, and I think it's time for, for, for churches and ministries and people and pastors to get back to this place of tears and getting back to brokenness and, and getting back to humility and purity and, and seeking God when no one is looking because out of that, there's going to be an overflow. Daniel, can you come up? Can you just lead us quickly? A couple of songs of worship. Yeah, let's give it up to Daniel. He's going to lead us, and I'm going to continue. We're going to continue praying. He's an amazing worship leader. Yeah. So let's just turn up. I mean, I'm going to pray now after this. I just feel the fire of God is going to fall even tonight. I just feel joy of the Lord is going to fall tonight. You know, if you want to, if you want to just, just seek the Lord. I just feel tonight there's a joy outbreak over here. You know, there's, if. And, and joy breaks miracles. Even people watching tonight, you know, I believe joy will hit, hit, your, hit your houses, hit your, uh, hit your living rooms. <laughs> hit. You know, we don't do that always. We try to close it. But tonight, I just feel that because I, I mean, I feel ask the Lord what the Lord wants us to do. He said, it's important. The joy has been important. Not joy, not brother joy. He's not here tonight. <laughs> but the joy of the Lord, you know, is important. Hallelujah. Amen. I think you guys know this song. We sing. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe. Is it on? Mountains are still being moved. 
John 7, 37, if you're thirsty, if you're really thirsty, not a little thirsty, but if you're really thirsty, 
I will for the rivers of living water. It'll flow from your bellies. It'll flow from your heart. And you know, there are seasons when he can be dry, but he wants to give rivers, not a tiny weeny stream, but he wants rivers of living water flowing out of our bellies, out of that flows life and it flows healings and it flows joy and it flows, you know, I mean, it, it's just beautiful, isn't it? So even tonight, we just pray that the rivers of living water will flow from out of our bellies tonight. There'll be a fresh, fresh, fresh stream and it'll, 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 it'll just do something miraculous even in our midst tonight. Lord, I pray for the joy of the Lord to come on, Lord, tonight, Lord. Even it can be your offices, it can be your schools, it can be even people watching. I believe there will be healings there, and there'll be miracles there, and there'll be salvations there. And I remember years back, I was in the season where I was just so full, and I walked into my office, and and I remember there was a Buddhist boy, and as he said, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling with depression, I'm struggling with oppression. I said, Can I pray for you? I prayed for him right in the office. He manifested, he got delivered. And you know what? He gave his life to Jesus and he got baptized. Say, listen, I, we've seen C's and I've, I've seen, you know, and this, this is no, it's not a secret. This will happen. I've been personally to 50 countries. I've seen it happen, not in church meetings, but right on the streets, right in the offices, right in, in homes and schools. And, you know, I, I mean, it's beautiful because the Holy Spirit is not a respecter of the place. He flows from within you. He's not even respected whether there's worship, no worship. I've seen, you know, but he, what he wants is for that river to just flow from within us. And, and I believe there's a season. We want to see it on the streets. We want to see it in our homes. We want to see it in, in our businesses because, you know, there's going to be the fire. There's going to be the river. There's going to be the glory. And we just want to adore him with one thing and we're going to pray right now. And I just feel, because it's all about Jesus. And we want to obey his, even his last words. And just want to pour our fictions on him. Didn't want heaven with 
they are drinking, you know. I think you need to. Watching tonight, I know we are on the 57th night. The next three night, like next two days, we've not done this because I do believe we do believe that joy is important. We do believe the rivers flowing through us is important because as we release it out and as we release it into the community and into the cities and into into where we are going, even into nations. We believe God's allowing us, even people watching, wherever I know there are nations watching us. I pray, let the rivers of living water even flow into your city, into your nation right now. Lord, I pray that tonight, let there be a shift in the, in the, in the way we drink, Lord. In the way we drink and way we receive, Lord. The way we receive. Let there be healings and miracles, Lord. Let depression be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Let spirit of heaviness be lifted in the name of Jesus. I take authority right now and does any, any heaviness in people's lives. Let it be lifted right now. And release your joy. Release your freedom. Release your freedom. Let there be the fresh freedom. The freedom, the freedom, the freedom, the freedom. Some of you are like, you know, you're just saying, you're not sure whether, uh, is, that, is that enough? And Jesus. More, Lord. More. Father, even tonight, even as we close, Father, we want to go.
full of your presence, full of your love, Lord, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let your face shine on us, Father, even as we leave, Father, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for coming.